Hey y'all, hey, welcome or welcome back to Tiffany with Purpose, where I provide faith-based content with purpose and inspire you to do the same. I always share according to what the Lord places on my heart. And today, y'all, this is a testimony from my missions trip, plus a word that the Lord has given me for the body of Christ. I'm so excited to share this with you guys and encourage us to do the things do do all the things whatever that may mean for us individually all right so boom i have been on my missions trip i am back guys god did the most beautiful thing in mexico okay so boom first of all first things first this is my first missions trip but even what happened there for people who have gone on many they testify that what happened while we were there was a, such a unique experience that they hadn't seen anything like it before i lived out the new testament guys we went to puerto Penasco, mexico and almost a thousand people gave their lives to jesus we saw the miracles the deaf made to hear the limbs growing back demons being cast out all of these beautiful miracles and signs and wonders that were going on and we were there for four days we were there for four days from my church about 90 people went and we joined with the church in arizona as well as a church in texas to go into the city so there were about 200 missionaries that went and within the city on saturday so we were there from thursday to monday on saturday there was like a worship night and within the city about 20 of the churches there joined together in unity to put on this worship night where approximately 3,000 people came to it and over the course of the days that we were there about 1,000 people gave their lives to Christ guys how powerful is that this is what I have to say about it it only happens because we were operating in the unity of the body of Christ. I didn't witness church. I witnessed the body of Christ at work with Christ being the head and every joint supplying what it needed to supply. People knowing their gifts, people knowing what they are called to do, listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit and going out and doing the work. What was gonna happen there was already going to happen because God planned it, right? Well, that was nothing short of a revival. And on Sunday, churches were filled. People genuinely were making this change for themselves, choosing to be followers of Christ and going and pursuing that life, regardless of the language barrier. Because baby, I don't speak, speak a lick of Spanish, all right? Didn't matter. <laughs> Did it matter? God so moved. The Holy Spirit so spoke, told us what to pray, told me what to pray. I could literally feel people being freed, you know, and as I'm laying hands on them, praying according to what the Holy Spirit was telling me to pray, regardless of the language barriers. Just so much. I don't want to go into all the details of what happened, but there's some things that I want to point out that are key. One, we were operating in unity, all right? The body of Christ coming together. And this is a thing that is so required for us to be uh, walking in one faith under one spirit. We have one Lord and Savior, okay? There's one baptism and people's lives being radically changed. Two, that sounds like big powerful stuff, obviously it is, right? But it didn't feel like it when it was happening. It's kind of like, this sounds like a very powerful thing, like the Holy Spirit just fell on the city and, and all these things are happening. And I didn't feel the presence of God that heavily. Though I knew I was covered, though I know I was doing the work of the Lord, though like me personally we're speaking, as far as like this big, like weighty feeling of the presence of God, that, that did not happen. We were just each out going to wherever we were sent in the city, doing the work of the Lord, loving on the people, praying, spreading the gospel. And then that was the fruit that was produced. It didn't feel like that massive thing was happening while it was happening. And that is so important. I think for a lot of us to to know and to understand as it concerns going out and doing whatever it is that we are called we may never see the fruit we may never see all of what happens but know that god is moving we are in such a time of revival okay this is a time for revival and this is just like the beginning of these things our church did that in mexico and i heard testimony of another church in our city going to costa rica i think and the same thing happened in the same response even people who have gone before they say that never witnessed anything like that the 
body working in the unity of the spirit and these just powerful results of revival happening in these places and the lord sent us all back here and you know what there's still so much work to be done and i want to talk about that and so on friday june 14th i want to share a dream that i had with you since we touched down in mexico a lot of my dreams have been about like working together in the unity of the spirit like i can feel the holy spirit i can hear the holy spirit directing people and i see people working together in community to rebuild the kingdom to get things done but this dream specifically that i had on friday was that same thing people working in the unity of the holy spirit and interceding for others and what i saw is that large groups of people were joined together praying according to what the holy spirit was saying and as we began to pray there was a i'm trying to figure out how to describe this like a force field was released from our mouths and it was spreading out to cover whatever territory we must have been praying over further than my eyes could see like from this central place of where we were gathered together and it was just spreading out covering this territory what i wrote in the middle of the night while i'm having this dream at like three o'clock in the morning is that i saw a wave of life or like this force field of power go out from our mouths and begin to spread over the territory as if it were being awakened as if it were being awakened as if the territory was being awake again i'm having this dream it's like three something in the morning and i'm trying to write it down but i'm really like half asleep but i'm also talking to god about it. it's like oh my gosh this is so beautiful and then he gives me a vision because i'm like half awake and i see a mailbox and the first three numbers on the mailbox are completely blurred out but the last three numbers are 144 and from that god was simply saying i am calling I am sending my remnant, okay? The mailbox was labeled 144. He's sending out the remnant. <laughs> it is so exciting. I don't know all the things y'all, but like he's doing it. He said that this was a time of revival. Not only has this 100% and continues to be a year of exposure, like he revealed in the beginning of this year. And I shared that in this word of 2024 with you guys. This is a year of exposure. And this is a year of people being gathered back to God. And right now he is saying, I am sending out the remnant, receiving them as well. Like he's bringing them to him and he's sending them out. And what's so crazy about this is later, I hadn't remembered what I wrote down because one, I was half asleep writing it too. It was like between three and five o'clock in the morning where all of this is happening. Plus there are other parts of the dream. So later on, when I'm just remembering the images that I saw, the Holy Spirit says awakening. And then he says, surge. I have forgotten that I literally wrote as that force field was going over the territory that it was as if the territory was being awakened all right so he's using that same phrase twice and of course i had to look into it we're here right you we we, we need to know what's the lord saying so awakening and by definition it means the act of waking from sleep a revival of interest or attention all right the lord is awaking up his children and then surge surge is a sudden large increase in something that has previously been steady or has only increased or developed slowly kind of like the revival that we saw in mexico and other places that is happening i don't know if you guys are hearing these testimonies of like <laughs> these revivals that are happening all over but it is happening it also means to rise and fall actively you want to think about waves it's coming in waves like boom here's this big wave all right then it gets kind of low and then boom here comes this another big wave to increase suddenly and powerfully a thousand people saved in four days is suddenly and powerfully a sudden powerful forward or upward movement movement especially by a crowd or a nature a natural force such as the water or tides Let's talk about the scriptures that I was given for this. So the first one was Joel 3 verses 9 through 12. Honestly, the entirety of Joel 3, I definitely suggest you all read it. But the Lord just highlighted these three verses, these four verses to me. And in total, chapter 3 is labeled, the Lord judges the nations. He's talking about him redeeming Israel and <laughs> let's back go down to the other nations, but he's waking up his children. And so verse nine says, proclaim this among the nations, 
consecrate for war i'm reading the english standard version and so it says stir up the mighty men but the king james version says wake up the mighty men let all the men of war draw near let them come up beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spheres let the weak say i am a warrior hasten and come all you surrounding nations and gather yourselves there bring down your warriors O lord let the nations stir themselves up and come to the valley of jehoshaphat where i will sit to judge all the surrounding nations i'm gonna go ahead and read 13 put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe go in tread for the wine press is full the vats overflow for their evil is great the lord is saying come on consecrate yourself get before me take your what you've been working with we're turning that into weapons what you're what you've been working with what i've given you to work with it's a weapon we are warriors now we are doing work for the lord he is about to judge the nations the harvest is ripe, right i'm coming to get my children and all these things have to be exposed the vast overflow for their evil is great we can see that now and we have work to do that's joel 3 and then 9 through 13 he also gave me revelation 3 1 through 6 and this is a letter to one of the churches all right to the church in sardis and the angel of the church in sardis right and to and to the angel of the church in sardis right the words of him who has the seven spirits of god in the seven stars i know your works you have a reputation of being alive but you are dead wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die for i have not found your works complete in the sight of my god remember then what you received and heard keep it and repent if you will not wake up i will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour i will come against you yet you have still a few names in sardis people who have not soiled their garments and they will walk with me in white for they are worthy the one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments and i will never blot out his name out of the book of life i will confess his name before my father and before his angels he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches and so in reading both of those together revelation and revelation 3 and joel 3 the lord reminded me of nehemiah when they were rebuilding the walls that they had their tools in one hand and they had their weapon for war in another hand the lord is saying that he is awakening people or he's saying wake up stir up the mighty men wake up for the work is not complete is what he's saying in revelation 3 and if you don't hear this i'm gonna come like a thief in the night and i want you to hear this just like i said we went and did that work but it didn't feel like it was happening for some people the lord came like a thief in the night he came and he offered redemption but i'll tell you well we gonna go here for some people that didn't go down like that there was this day we go in on thursday well we get there on wednesday but we actually start going out on thursday and we my group my team goes out to a particular area where we are going and evangelizing or whatever and there's one person's door that we knock on and we had a translator with the group and they're um just inviting the lady to the worship night that's happening on saturday and at first i wasn't with them but i walk up to the door and i perceive in the spirit that this person is a witch and i began to pray in the spirit and the lord was telling me that she was a witch and she had been casting spells on people in the neighborhood and i'm just praying and i'm breaking those things all of this like the lord reveals this and i'm praying in the spirit so whatever it is is on saturday there was a girl who had many demons in her and had them all cast out crazy story that i'm not going to get in the details of but once she gave her life to jesus that she confessed him as her lord and savior all those things went away she received the spirit of peace and the spirit of joy her entire countenance changed but she was from that neighborhood and said out of her own mouth that there was a witch in the neighborhood who had been casting spells on people for that lady the lord came like a thief in the night all right we not we're, we're not letting that happen to us okay we're not letting that happen to us the lord is saying wake up You've got work to do. The work is not complete. We need to get together. We need to get together in unity, in his spirit. And all that means is be led by his spirit. Do the work that he is telling you to do and do not hesitate to do it. Whatever it looks like, if he's giving you a big picture for things, just start taking steps toward it. You don't even have to have the whole thing figured out. You don't have to have the whole plan together. Start doing the work.
he will bless you he will establish your steps okay so boom he's awakening us because we have work to do and to understand that while we're working we need to be prepared to fight and joel he said take those plowshares beat them into swords this is war okay and in Nehemiah, they had the tool in the one hand, they had the weapons in the other hand, because while they were building, they were ready for the warfare that was coming. We have work to do, going out and gathering God's children and sharing the gospel and changing lives according to however he has called us individually. We have work to do, but do not be fooled and do not think that the enemy's not coming for you in those things. Be ready to fight as well. Um, he also gave me 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34, which says, Wake up from your drunken stupor, as is right, and do not go on sinning, for some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. Wake up. Repent. We have work to do. We cannot just be like, oh, some people are going to get it. Some We got to come. America? America. We have to come out of that mindset of people gonna believe what they want to believe which ultimately they will right but he says i say this to your shame there are people that have no knowledge of god who are we around especially on a regular basis that we have not shared the gospel with that we have not testified about what the lord has done in our lives about regardless of whatever hr got to say about anything the lord says we have work to do i say this to your shame get up stop doing whatever you're doing and get to work okay also romans this is the last scripture romans 13 11 through 14 besides this you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. the night is far gone the day is at hand so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light hello we got work to do let us walk properly as in the daytime not in orgies in drunkenness not in sexual immorality and sensuality not in quarreling and jealousy but put on the lord jesus christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires the lord is saying wake up wake up wake up one wake up salvation is nearer to us than 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 you think the lord is doing a thing all right he said he was drawing lines in the sand that he is separating those who truly love him with an undivided heart and those who do not we do not want to be caught on the wrong side if the lord has stirred up something in you get to work on those things get to work on those things be encouraged because the harvest is already there you don't have to create the harvest we're not at a point where you know what the word talks about we're going to we're going to reap things that we did not even plant i think a lot of times unfortunately we take that in selfishly and we're like we're gonna have things that we didn't even work for baby yes go get this harvest go bring the people into the body of christ go save the people go testify go just love on people just be in community go serve at the orphanages at the women's shelters at the jails wherever the lord is calling you and i'm not planting ideas if the lord didn't call you to that you don't got no business in there because if he called you to it the work is already laid out he's already planned it out when you get there you just have to you just have to you just have to reap all right we're not pricking we're not planting planting we're not pruning any of that he says go reap the harvest just go do the work it's already there ready all right the work is a lot the harvest is plenty but the laborers are few the harvest is ready we need to go out and do the things that he's calling us to do. And while I'm saying that, because that's all of us, that's me too. That was so aggressive, I'm sorry. <laughs> Got excited. Y'all, we are in such a time of revival. I feel like I've been saying this. The Lord has been saying this. This is such a just beautiful time that we get to exist in. And it doesn't take much. I shared with you guys before and even with the mission trip, like I just said, it doesn't, it's not this huge thing you're not gonna feel it you just need to be obedient to what he's telling you to do and the rest he his name will be glorified for right he's gonna get the glory from the things okay your work will not be in vain if the lord is telling you to do it now if the lord ain't telling you to do something you're doing it anyway i can't speak on that all right i don't that's not what i'm talking about but the things that the lord is telling you to do get active 
on those things and also prepare for the fight because the enemy does not want you to do these things all right he's going to come against you on these things when i tell you the warfare leading up to this mexico trip was heavy particularly in the month of may he tried to distract me so bad so bad didn't work okay it didn't work i locked in i knew what i was being sent for i kept my eyes open to see what the lord needed to show me it was so much so much but it can be summed up in this know these things for sure that we are in a season of revival we are in a season of revival it is imperative all those that are called get to work to do the things that the lord has called you to do have confidence be encouraged have courage walk in strength because they know that the lord is doing it you're not going out alone the lord is doing it and if he is sending you he is going to be faithful um to you concerning the things that he is sending you for all right and his name will be glorified his name will be glorified but like i said we've all got things and one of the things that he's placed in my hands all right is you guys <laughs> one of the things that he's placed in my hands are you guys and he has impressed on my heart to start a youtube community bible study group more on this later i can tell you this much right now one i already lead a bible study this is a thing that the lord called me to do we've been at it for about a year and a half and the lord has done beautiful things through the ladies that have joined this group this year the focus has been on the teachings of the apostles i shared with you guys before that that's what the lord called me to really hone in on this year and this is what we've been studying in bible study as far as knowing what the bible actually says and having a good understanding of like the holy spirit and what god like desires for us to do as his holy nation we need to make sure we have a good picture of that and that's going to come from the word we need to get into it i don't think that a majority of us are very clear on that but let's study it together and so i'm inviting you guys to do that now i will say one this is going to start in august I am working on rewriting the curriculum. I've already written for like what we've gone through already in my Bible study group, but you know, since doing it, there's some things that I want to add. So I'm working on doing that right now. And also this is gonna be a small group. Unfortunately, I don't have the capacity to open this to everyone because I do want this to, I want to know your names and I want to be active in this, in what we're journeying through together. I want to be active in the learning experience and all of these things in the discussions all of these things i want to know you and so i can't do that with hundreds of people i just literally don't have the capacity for that but i'm still praying about this there will either be one or two like separate groups but with a max of 20 people each so like one group will meet on one specific day during the week and the other group would meet on another specific day during the week. But each group could have a max of 20 people. Again, still praying about this. This will not start until August. And what I am going to do, because again, I don't have the capacity for it, but I don't want people left out. The curriculum that I am writing will be available. I'll, it'll be a part of my like description box whenever that is completed so that you guys can start your own Bible study groups or life groups if you feel led, specifically only if you feel led. When I tell you guys, if you try to do something that the Lord has not led you to do, you will work in vain. It is going to fall apart because it's not founded on him you will toil and it will be hard for you because it's not founded on him but if he is calling you to do it then you walk into that thing also this will only be for women me personally i think that god is a god of order i don't know where i stand a hundred percent on women being teachers as it concerns like the word of god and stuff to like everyone i know that it's appropriate for women to women and so i'm gonna stay in the lane that i i have conviction for that's just me personally it is still something that i'm seeking the lord about for now women only yeah and i'll give you guys more information on that as it comes about but if that's something that you think you're interested in go ahead and uh put it in the comments let me know let me know let me know kind of what the temperature is concerning this if you're making it to this part of the video i don't know but yeah y'all that's all that i have to say on that god is doing a thing he is waking up his children and if you needed that wake up call baby wake up if you needed that little push to go ahead and start the things that he's placed on your heart go ahead and do it because this is the time and these things will be completed with ease 
because it is the appointed time. Definitely seek the Lord on what that looks like in your own life. Do not just run because I said so. I am encouraging you to seek the Lord about it. And if he's called you to be an intercessor, be praying into these things according to what the Lord is speaking to you. But definitely start praying over the nations that the veils are removed, that people are able to see. Start praying over uh, those that are called, that they have strength and courage to do the works that the Lord is calling them to. Start covering them, protecting them against the plots and plans of the enemy, although he will absolutely fail. There's power in our prayers. So go ahead and lift those things up to the Lord. Um, yeah, that's, I think, that's all I have on that. Yeah, until next time, you guys be great in the strength of the Lord. I don't know when I'm going to be back. I just, I just genuinely don't know. You guys be great in the strength of the Lord. And I'll see you next time.